When a person loves someone and they grow attraction towards them, let's speak in a completely modern and philosophical tense. You love someone, you like someone, you see someone on the street, of course it's haram, but just to make you understand uh, 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 an incident. You see someone and you like her, what is the first thing you do? You tell her that, you know what, I like you. This is the kalima. The first thing we do, we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we embrace the kalima. We say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Then the next step when you like someone is that you start talking to them. You add them on WhatsApp, you add them on Facebook, you add them on Snapchat, you add them on Instagram, and you start talking to each other, sending messages, texting, calling, late night calls. The next level of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is salah. We wake up in the morning, right while we're sleeping, first thing we do, we get up, we say, Allahu Akbar, and we start praying our Fajr Salah. We're trying to connect to our Almighty Allah that wait, before anything happens in the world, Ya Allah, I need to speak to you. Time progresses, we have our breakfast, we get ready for work. As we're doing work, we stop our work, we say, no, Ya Allah, I need to go and talk to you again. We pray Dhuhr Salah. A little while later, we, we're doing our work, we say, no, Ya Allah, I gotta talk to you again. We pray Asr Salah. We come home before we have dinner. No, Ya Allah, I gotta talk to you again. I love you too much. And then a little while later, before we go to sleep, No, Ya Allah, I gotta talk to you again before I go to sleep. Constantly talking to our loved one. This is the next level of muhabba and love. Then after that, the third level is what? You take her on a date. You go out somewhere, you eat somewhere. You eat with them. You don't eat, you don't eat unless they don't eat. And when they, want, when they tell you to eat or when they want to eat, you eat with them. The next level of muhabba is song, fasting. And we say, Ya Allah, you tell us when to eat. When you order us to eat, we will eat. And when you tell us not to eat, we will not eat. Just because we hold so complete submissive love to you, Ya Allah. Then the next level of love, the fourth level, is when you start spending on them. You buy them a nice gold necklace, you buy her a promise ring, you buy her some clothes, buy her some bags. The next level of love is zakat. Where you say, Ya Allah, my wealth is all but given by you. Everything came from your majesty and your rahmah. And it came from your supreme being. Nothing belongs to me. Ya Allah, you tell me how much you want me to spend. This money is all yours. Whatever you ask me to spend, I will spend. Whatever money I've earned, Ya Allah, you have the complete haq in it. It's because through your will and through your rahmah, I've gained this money. Then the last level. The level where the love reaches its pinnacle, its zenith. That's when you visit the house of your beloved. You know how you guys have Romeo and Juliet? The Arabs had someone called Imra ul Qais and Layla Majnu. So Imra ul Qais walks into the city of Layla and he says, Amurru ala diari diari Layla. Amurru ala diari diari Layla. Uqabbilu dhal jidara wa dhal jidara. Wa ma hubbu diari shagafna qalbi. Walakin hubbu man sakana diara. He starts walking around in the city and he starts grabbing the walls of the city of Layla. Starts kissing the wall, sees a dog on the street, grabs it, embraces it. Sees the floor, the dirt, grabs it and embraces it, kisses it. Starts rubbing his hands all over the floor, rubbing his hands against the wall. Someone walks by and says, hey man, are you tapped in the head? Are you crazy? What are you doing? He said, this is the city of my beloved. He said, yes, it's the city of your beloved, but it's not your beloved. It's not Layla, why are you doing this? He said, yes, it's not Layla, but it enjoys the nisbah of being related and housing my Layla. Therefore, I love every stone in the city. We go to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Allah does not live there, but it is Allah's tajalli that is over there. It is the Baytullah. It has the nisbah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we run around the house of Allah, going around and around and around, wearing two, 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 two cloths, completely non-stitched, and we're smelling and our hair is disheveled, and we're walking around over and over again, trying to gain this proximity, trying to gain Allah, trying to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we go to the Majid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We go by the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we stand by the individual, who sacrificed his entire life, who sacrificed his family, and sacrificed everything for us. And we stand, stand in humility, and stand in that area. We go visit Jannatul Baqir. Subhanallah. If we don't visit the home of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Baytullah, and the area where Islam sprouted from, then how do we expect to love Islam? The unfortunate reality today is, is that we have money, we have wealth, we have everything. The first thing we do is when we get a chance to build bookification, we go to Las Vegas, we go to Hawaii, we go to Cancun, we go to Maldives, we go to Paris, we go, we, we fly out anywhere. But lastly, we think that, oh, you know, when I get older, then I'll do my Hajj. When I get older, then I'll do my Umrah. Subhanallah. We don't know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us enough life to visit his house or not. 
To go to the house of Allah means that you are the guest of Allah. You have to be a VIP guest. I had one haji once. I do Hajj and Umrah. I take people for uh, Hajj and Umrah from America. So one of my friends came and he, his visa was granted to him by the prince. So while he was over there, he would tell everyone, very excited, young guy. Hey, you know how I came to Hajj? The prince gave me an invitation and he'd go around telling everyone. So one day I stopped him. I said, what do you think? You're special that the prince gave you an invitation? I said, everyone over here has been given the invitation by the king of kings. Everyone over here has been given the invitation by Malikul Muluk, by the king of kings, Shehen Shah Hunka Shehen Shah. Rabbul Alameen has chosen every one of these individuals and said, I want them to come and visit me in this year. And I want them to come to my house because I want to forgive them. And I want to clean their slate. And I want to raise their maqam. And I want to elevate their status. So SubhanAllah, when we intend to go to the house of Allah, it is not us intending to go to the house of Allah, but it is Allah intending for us to come to His house. It is Allah willing for us that I want you to come to my house today. And I want you to come and take the barakat and the blessings of my house today. And SubhanAllah, going to the house of Allah and just standing and, and disengaging yourself from the rest of the world. Disengaging yourself from social media, from friends, from family, from our loved ones and from our enemies. And standing there, just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart is crying. Your body is crying. And you all this feeling that you cannot tell. And it's only you and your Allah. At a moment that you can ask and beseech the Almighty for anything. And you know the Almighty will answer it for you. One time, Salim bin Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhuma, He was the grandson of the famous Khalifa, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And as Salim, he's doing tawaf. And as any celebrity sheikh or celebrity scholar, when they get, go somewhere, there's a huge group of individual that collects around them. So as Salim bin Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu is doing tawaf around the Kaaba, there's a huge group of individuals that have stocked up behind him. So the Khalifa of that time sees and he says, who is this individual? What's this, what's this going on that everyone's just, uh, 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 rushing towards, towards him? And there's this huge rush. So they said, this is Salim. He said, the son of Abdullah, the son of Umar bin al-Khattab. He said, yes, the very one. He said, oh, he's the one of the fuqaha of Medina. He's one of the muftis of Medina. So he said, I, I would be honored to go visit him. So he goes to Salim bin Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhuma, And he says, ya Salim, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ana amirul mu'mineen. Ana khalifatul muslimin. Hal turidu min shay? He says, I am the Amir of the believers. I am the Khalifa of the time. Wealth flows from underneath my hands. The treasury is in my control. Today, the wealthiest man in the Muslim kingdom and the Muslim caliphate comes to you and is offering you a blank check. He's offering you his credit cards. He's offering you, as they say in Urdu, Mu Boli Qimat. He's telling you, say whatever you want and it shall be granted to you. He's telling you, ask whatever you want and it shall be given to you. And Salim bin Abdullah bin Umar, as he is doing tawaf, and the Khalifa is on his right side, and the Kaaba is on his left side, he turns towards him, and as he has just been requested, that ask for whatever you want and I shall be granted, he looks to his left towards the Kaaba, looks towards the right towards the Khalifa, and he says, Afi baytillah ila ghayrillah. Afi baytillah ila ghayrillah. In the house of Allah, you want me to ask someone other than Allah? Can't happen. I'm in the house of Allah, how can I ask for someone to, to someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A, a connection our individual feels, where he completely disengages himself from the rest of the world and solely commits to the might and to the honor and submits himself to the greatness and to the sovereignty and to the majesty of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, the only, I, I, I advise all the youth and I advise all the individuals that Hajj is not just something you go once in a lifetime. Umar is not just something you go once in a lifetime. It's something you go over and over and over again. When you love someone, you visit their home over and over and over again. When you go to a restaurant and you visit it over and over again, what happens? Everyone in the area knows you. Everyone in the staff knows you. They say these are VIPs walking in. Imagine going to the haram over and over again and the malaika of Allah know you. 
And the angels know you. The angels standing at the gates of Makkah and Medina, they recognize you. And the moment you do dua, they say, Ya Allah, this is a familiar voice. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, when an individual constantly does dua, their voice is familiar to the angels and they take it um, swiftly to the doors of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the doors of acceptance. If an individual, his voice is renowned in the house of Allah, in the bait of Allah, in the city and the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa imagine what a greater honor could it be to be known in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give one and all the ability and the tawfiq to go to his house and to visit his house over and over and over again and to be from Dhuyuf al-Rahman, to be from the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember we are going to the Haram, we are going for Hajj and Umrah to rectify ourselves. We are not going there. There are going to be many logistical issues whether it's with your travel agent, whether it's with the government, whether it's with the bus drivers, whether it's with the hotel, irrespective of what it is, there will always be logistical issues. We are not going there to rectify the kingdom, or rectify the travel agent, or rectify uh, the hotels, or rectify the business. We are going there to rectify ourselves. We are going to fix ourselves. All those things are secondary. Our money doesn't bring us for Hajj. It is the ultimate invitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. With this, I leave you all. Until next time, we shall meet again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give one and all the ability to act upon what has been said and constantly call us towards His house. Wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.